An allylic carbon is one that is attached directly to a carbon-carbon double bond. And when there's a hydrogen attached to that carbon, we call it an allylic hydrogen. It turns out that it's got special reactivity. I haven't shown what's attached to these other carbons or the other things attached to this one because it doesn't matter. What we're focusing on is the fact that there's a carbon-carbon double bond here, a carbon attached to it, and a hydrogen attached to that carbon. And there's a particular kind of special reactivity that we want to talk about right now, and that is replacement of this hydrogen by bromine, allylic bromination. Here's an example. When this compound, this alkene called propylene, is treated with a source of bromine radicals, I'll get to that in a minute, bromine is substituted specifically at the allylic position. And the mechanism is one that you would easily guess from the mechanism that you already know of radical halogenation of alkanes. The bromine radical abstracts a hydrogen in a one electron process. It causes this bond to undergo homolytic cleavage, forming an HBr bond, and leaving a single electron on that carbon. So mechanistically, the initial product is an allylic radical. Plus HBr is a byproduct. This turns out to be significant. I'll tell you why in a minute. Now, some of you might have noticed that this has a second resonance structure. And we picture that one single electron forming a pi bond at that position, together with one single electron of the pi bond, with the other electron being left on the end. Now, it turns out these structures are exactly equivalent. They're the same thing. So when the radical reacts with bromine in a second step, it reacts at either carbon. So now we're picturing this electron forming a bond with bromine as this bromine-bromine bond is broken in a homolytic reaction that makes a bromine radical. You've seen that before. And now you'll notice that this bromine radical that we started with to abstract a hydrogen is regenerated in the second step, which leads to the radical chain reaction that we're so familiar with. So this is a process called allylic bromination, and it specifically substitutes bromine for hydrogen at allylic positions because the radical that formed is resonance stabilized, and resonance stabilization is really significant. So we're making a more stable radical, and that's why the selectivity targets the allylic position. One thing left to do is to explain how we get these bromine radicals to begin with and how we get bromine in there. It turns out the same molecule is a precursor for both. Take a look. When a molecule called NBS is treated with light, bromine radicals are formed. And when NBS is treated with HBr, it forms bromine molecules. So this single reagent, NBS, is a source of bromine radicals in the initiation step, homolytic cleavage, to make a bromine radical that subsequently participates in the chain reaction. And the byproduct HBr formed in the initial chain reaction step is the same HBr molecule that can react with NBS to make bromine. And what's the structure of this magic NBS? Well, it's a little complicated and I don't expect you to memorize it, but take a look. The key thing about NBS is that it has a real weak nitrogen-bromine bond, which means it can be selectively cleaved by light to make the bromine radicals needed for this reaction. Now let me show you just a little bit about using this reaction in the synthesis. Generally, for good synthetic yields, we need to have an alkene that will generate a radical that has two identical resonance structures. Two identical resonance structures. Take a look. The radical intermediate generated from propylene has two resonance structures. They look like this. So the resulting bromide is allylic bromide, and there's only one reaction at this end or at this end of this symmetrical radical produces the same product. This would be true for some cyclic structures, too. Cyclopentene, treated with NBS and light, makes a resonance-stabilized radical that has, again, two identical resonance structures. So once again, there's only one product formed. Other alkenes have allylic positions, but the problem may be that those allylic positions are not equivalent, or the 
radical form has two resonance structures that are not equivalent. Here's an example. The two allylic positions are entirely equivalent, so it won't matter whether we write that initial radical formation at this end or at this end of the molecule. But when we write the second resonance structure, we see that's not equivalent to the first. They are different structures and they will lead to different products. So in a case like this, when we have two resonance structures that are different, we can expect mixtures of allylic bromides. And synthetically, this is really crippling. Often it's difficult to separate the isomers, and this is not a useful approach for synthetic chemistry. So in this case, we would say we'll make this allylic bromide and this allylic bromide. Most likely significant amounts of each, not necessarily equal, but significant amounts of each, and synthetically problematic. So the take-home message is that the allylic bromination occurs selectively at the carbons attached to the carbon-carbon double bond of an alkene, that this is synthetically useful pretty much only when the resonant stabilized radical intermediate has two equivalent resonant structures, so they form the same product. And finally, let me give you a couple of structures to look at so you can practice thinking about allylic bromination where that bromination would occur, and whether the reactions would be synthetically useful. Take a look at this secopentene. It's slightly different. What different conclusions would you draw, or would they be the same, when you think about allylic bromination? How many allylic bromination products would you expect to result from this alkene? And finally, if I add one more carbon to the chain, what would your answer be? How many allylic bromination products would you expect? And would you expect this reaction to be synthetically useful?